Hello, I'm Bruce Shady, and in the next three segments of Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at some water demonstrations dealing with pneumatics and hydraulics. Now, starting with the siphons, it actually dates back a few thousand years. This ancient pictograph shows early Egyptians using siphons in a beer making process dated about 2500 BC. The idea of a siphon is actually fairly simple. We need a hose filled with water, we need a reservoir, and we need a destination. And if I put this into here, and if I were to lift this one up, we'll see it reverse directions. And it reverses direction. And if I lift this one up, it reverses direction again. It's always going to flow in the direction of the lower potential. A siphon works because gravity is pouring down on the taller column of liquid, leaving reduced pressure at the top of that tube. As the liquid leaves the longer tube, the reduced pressure pulls liquid from the reservoir up to take its place. This theory relies upon the cohesion of the particles of the liquid, which means a continuous chain of cohesive bonds must exist in the liquid. Some scientists refer to this as a chain model because you can think of the water like a chain being pulled through the tube instead of a liquid. However, this theory is flawed. We'll see that a siphon still flows even when there's gaps between the particles of the liquid. It is important to note that it's the change in pressure inside the longer tube and not actually the weight of the liquid. If the siphon flow were determined by weight, then a setup like this could actually have the liquid flowing uphill. Now the siphon tube can be lifted considerably higher as long as the delivery is in a lower position than the original source of the water. <laughs> what else? Oh yeah, it's six. Never mind. Oh. Yeah. In this case, we were able to lift the siphon up to about 18 feet and found that it still flowed without any problems. This is siphon at its finest. How high can a siphon go? Under normal conditions of atmospheric pressure, water can be drawn up to about a maximum height of 10.3 meters, which is about 33.9 feet. For every 100 centimeters in height, the pressure inside reduces by about 10%. Going higher than 10.3 meters will cause cavitation inside the tube. Gas bubbles will start to diffuse out of the liquid as a near vacuum forms at this height. When the gap becomes big enough, the siphon will stop flowing. Now, is it possible to go higher than the 10.3 meters? Yes, under certain conditions. We would have to remove the excess gases dissolved in the liquid. This process is called degassing. This is an investigation I'll try in a future video. Another interesting aspect we found is that the tube doesn't necessarily have to run straight up and down from the reservoir to the destination. We also found that adding paint to the liquid made it much easier to see and calculate the rate of flow. We find that siphons have all sorts of uses. For example, you could use one for aquariums, for irrigating crops, for flushing a toilet. Siphons can even be found in nature. Now with a discarded bottle and a little bit of tubing, we can make something called a flying drop siphon. The setup has a siphon tube going into a plastic bottle and a second tube in the cap acts as the drain. A tube inside the bottle will force the liquid upwards. Now to start it, I'm simply going to add some water to this bottle. Oh, that should be plenty. I'm going to reconnect the 
the top with the little tube on it. And I'll put this end of the hose into the reservoir. Simply turn it over. And there it goes. Notice that the siphon hasn't started yet. A small amount of water will drain out that lower tube, which will decrease the pressure inside the bottle, and then the siphon will start. Another popular example of siphons is called the tanless cup. The siphon tube is built into the cup and it can be filled up to a certain level without the siphon starting. Fill the cup higher than the top of the tube and the siphon will cause the liquid to completely drain out. Now you can make your own tanless cup with some simple materials. You'll need a plastic cup and a bendy straw. Stretch the straw out. I'll use some hot glue to hold it in place. Here's a hole in the bottom of the cup and I'm simply going to push this straw through that hole just a short distance through it is fine. There we go. All right now it's ready to go. Add a little bit of water. The cup holds water that's fine and it's not draining we can see here. If I tilt it, that'll submerge the tube and start the siphon. Here's another one that I made in a clear plastic drinking glass. Now I think the more interesting version of the tanless cup is the bell siphon. So let's see how that works. Now here we can see the setup. The larger tube is glued to the bottom but has holes in it which allows the liquid inside. The smaller tube drains through the bottom. Now this is fairly simple, but here's one that's even easier to build. It's made with a plastic bottle, a test tube, a straw, and a bottle cap. To start we need a hole drilled in the cap that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the straw. I've already cut the bottom out of the plastic bottle. I also have to make some cuts into the straw itself. Here's a close-up of what the straw should look like. To put it all together, the straw is fit snugly through the hole in the cap. Make sure it's tight so it doesn't leak. It's then screwed on to the bottle. There we go. Now let's see how it works. I'll start by putting a test tube on top of that straw. The straw should lift the test tube up high enough so that there's a slight gap at the bottom. Pour in some water. There's no leaks yet. Now let's add a little bit more water and see if it works. And there it goes. Now I have one more example of a bell siphon and this one makes it easy to see how it works. 
This one I made with red and white clay, a plastic tube, all sandwiched between two sheets of plastic. I used six binder clips to hold it together. It's important that there's a gap at the bottom and also a small gap at the top. The opening is about three quarters of an inch wide, and here's the drink tube coming out the bottom. If you want to try siphons for yourself, here's some possible investigations. How high can you lift the siphon tube above the reservoir? What happens as you increase the distance between the reservoir and the destination? You can try making changes to the liquid itself, or you can try changing the diameter of the tube and see what effect that has on the flow rate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment on siphons, and if you did, go on to part two, where we're going to take a look at making Huron's Fountain. Okay, bye.